Direct from our newsroom in Washington. Steve Biko. Steve Biko. On Stephen Bantu Biko. Steve Biko is an anti-apartheid activist in South Africa in the 1960s and 70s. He was born on the 18th of December 1946 in King Williamstown, South Africa. He was mostly known for uh, founding the Black Consciousness Movement and the South African Student Organization, also known as SASO. Steve had an interest in anti-apartheid politics from a young age. After getting his junior certificate, he went to Lovedale, where his brother Kaya went. Kaya was also interested in anti-apartheid politics and joined many protests. Kaya was however arrested and both brothers were then moved 60 kilometers away from the school. Kaya was charged for being a member of Poco, the armed wing of the PAC. He was given a sentence of two years, with 15 months of uh, suspended and served his time at Fort Glamorgan Jail near East London. However, Steve ran, ran away to continue his studies at Lovedale. He attended the school for three months until the police took him in for interrogation. Later, he got expelled because of his brother and other protesters' action. After this in incident, he was sent uh, to a Catholic boarding school in Nat Natal. As he finished high school, he enrolled in medical school called University of Natal Medical School. It was here at medical school where he decided to join the National Union of South, at South African Students, also known as NUSAS. However, since the union was dominantly white liberals, he had a tough time representing the needs of the Africans. So he decided to resign in 1969 and form South African Students Organization, also known as SASO. He had a way of, you know, of, of appealing to people on a social basis. You know, this first striking thing about him is that he, he is a very friendly person and a person that is always ready. He was quite selfless, you know, the person that is always ready to go out of his way to assist the next man. And uh, to a point where, you know, even in the township here where he stayed at Ginsburg, he was not a lawyer, but everybody that had a problem of whatever nature, they would go to his home, you know, just to consult him. Uh, you know, it became so much that it was sometimes very difficult for him to do any other work during weekends, you know, but just to sit and listen to people's problems. I would say the time that he, you know, he spent with people led him to setting up all these projects that one sees around Steve. In 1969, Steve Biko was one of the founding members of South African Student Organization. Him and some other members decided to break away from the National Union of South African Students because it was dominated by white students. In 1960, NUSAS allowed blacks to join the organization because they felt sympathetic about their cause. However, blacks soon realized that they weren't doing enough to tackle the deep problems of racism and relating issues. Steve Biko stepped up as president of the SASO. He was strongly motivated by black freedom speakers in the US, such as Lambidi. However, he also took inspiration from the African National Congress, but he allowed non-violent methods used to uh, bring down apartheid. The SASO expanded enormously and allowed many blacks to set up self-help projects, such as clinics. SASO is aimed for black students. However, the issues which they are addressing related to the African public. Though their underlying goal was to effectively challenge apartheid and become full citizens of Africa. This led to the Sasso embracing the ideology of the black consciousness, which was the movement that believed blacks had to solve the apartheid on their own. Steve Biko's widow is Mrs. Nsiki Biko. Well, if, if it were he was on a strike, I don't think it would have killed him. Yes, especially, you know, quoting the number of days they say he, he, he was refusing food. I don't think that would have killed him. Steve Biko died in police custody on September 12, 1977. He was arrested at a roadblock and detained. He was stripped and chained for 20 days for being sent to the police base in Port Elizabeth. He was beaten severely due to ignoring the officer's demand to stand as he sat down. He sustained a brain hemorrhage due to the beatings. Biko was driven to Pretoria 
shackled and still naked in the back of a van. On September 11, he was frothing at mouth and unable to speak. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission, a government body assembled in South Africa after the end of apartheid, concluded in its 1998 report that the use of torture and assault during interrogation was widespread and systematic, and was used by security police at all levels and all parts of the country, and was condoned by the government as an official practice. In fact, the TRC released a statement saying, the commission finds that the death in detention of Mr. Stephen Bantu Biko on September 12, 1977 was a gross human rights violation. Magistrate Martinus Prince found that the members of the SAP were not implicated in his death. The magistrate's uh, finding contributed to the creation of a culture of impunity in the SAP. Despite the inquest finding no person responsible for his death, the Commission finds that the view of the fact that Pico died in the custody of law enforcement officials, the probabilities are that he died as a result of injury sustained during his detention. Steve Pico's death caused an international outcry, and he was instantly lifted to the status of martyr and symbol of black resistance to the oppressive apartheid regime. The South African government fought this pub public appeal to Pico by instantly banning several individuals and organizations that were associated with Steve Pico. It was not until 1999 that the South African government publicly recognized the inhumanity of what was done to Steve Pico. Even though ANC activists and ideologists who were threatened by the de development and growth of black consciousness in the 1970s and 80s mingled with the rivals to share President Zuma, who in turn showered praise on Biko's tremendous work that inspired self-determination and physiological freedom among the oppressed. Even after this, the ANC have created the Biko Center in an attempt to unify the ANC and Black Consciousness Movement to, the, to have the same ideology. Steve Biko has had a long-lasting legacy in the history of South Africa as his founding of the Black Consciousness Movement has influenced the way, way the Blacks are treated today. The Black Consciousness Movement has inspired a generation and fired the confrontation between school children and the apartheid authorities in Soweto and uh, other townships. <laughs>